wonderful, marvelous, magnificent, splendid, perfect, loved, loved, loving, lovable, healthy, wealthy. I am a grand being. I am. I. Hello. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let's get into it. I'm Kenyatta, and this will be a reading from the Hoodoo Tarot, Tarot Deck. The title of this reading is You Ugly and You Fat. Now, you remember uh, the color purple? Do you remember Mr. Right? And how uh, much of a vicious abuser he was. Okay? To Seely and pretty much just, just about everybody he came across, right? So what did he say to Seely? You know, you black, you poor, you ugly, you a woman, you're nothing, okay? You black, you poor, you ugly, you's a woman. In other words, you're nothing, okay? So somebody then told you something about you, that you, you ugly, okay? You fat, essentially telling you that you are nothing, But I think about that uh, speech from Malcolm X, and we just going to tone it down to just a few words. Who taught you to hate yourself? Who taught you to hate yourself? Who told you about your characteristics, your physical characteristics, that put you in a position of making you feel like you're nothing because of your size, your skin color? Okay? And this is not just for people that are black. Okay, your size, your skin color, your hair texture, okay, the way your eyes sit on your face, that your nose, the size of your nose, your teeth, and, you know, these physical things. How often are people judged by their physical characteristics? And usually when people want to insult somebody, that's the first thing they talk about, their physical characteristics. <laughs> Yet... Difference makes the world go round, right? Still, people have this strange um, thinking that if they look a certain way, okay, what is supposedly acceptable by society, okay, everybody looks the same, everybody be the same. I'm thinking about other Matrix again. Remember when uh, Neo took, um, I mean, Morpheus took Neo in that simulation and everybody pretty much had on the same colors, black white and you saw a touch of gray here and there okay but you remember the woman in red who stood out okay which caught his eye but everybody else was just the same you know not really even thinking about where they were going or what they were doing just on automatic because everybody looked the same everybody was the same okay so if you don't look a particular way Okay. or whatever somebody told you, whoever that somebody is, is acceptable, <clears throat> okay, to some strange standards, that something is wrong with you, and that you are what, a nothing, and then they, then we have things like, don't judge a book by its cover, okay, but if you don't look a certain way, you too fat, you too this, you too that, or whatever the case may be, you're nothing, Um, very low way of thinking, but this is the things that people say to attack you, to make you feel less than. Because, you know, you don't look like everybody else or whatever the societal standard is, okay? The fake 3D, right? <laughs> the simulation, right? <laughs> the illusion, right? Supposed to be fake, supposed to be an illusion, supposed to be a lie, supposed to not be real. However, you don't fit this illusion standard physically. So you nothing. So who told you that? Who told you to hate yourself? Who in your life, some kind of plant, Okay, operative, opponent, whatever the fuck. 
who is very much a part of the simulation, right? Very much a part of the illusion, very much a part of the lie, very much a part of the matrix, etc., etc., etc. Okay. But who acts, maybe who acts like they aren't. Remember, I said acts. Okay. Told you these things. For you to look in the mirror or not look in the mirror because you don't like to look in the mirror because you don't fit the standard of the illusion, of the lie. Okay. Yes, we are physical creatures, people. You know, their eyes, they look and see. Okay, this is how we decide we're going to judge a person and what category we're going to put them in, what box we're going to put them in and want to believe that they're supposed to be in, et cetera, et cetera, based off of the way they look. They attack a person, okay, based off of the way they look. Make them feel small. Tell them they funny looking. Tell them you was a nothing. Powerful, abusive, yet powerful words. Right? And sticks and stones. They can break my bones, but words, they never hurt me. Biggest lie ever. A words will never hurt me. Biggest lie ever. All right. But let's see. Who told you that? Who told you to hate yourself? All right. Let's get into it. Here we have. Look at there. Miss Robinson. Upright. I've been watching me. You know who Miss Robinson is. All right. Two of coins. Upright. Big mama. In reverse. Courting. In reverse. Okay. And here we have. Eight of Knives, Upright, Big Mama, the Devil. This is the Devil card, y'all. You know, in the Rider Waite deck. The person going to tell you this and make sure they're going to put you to sleep, put you to death. Okay. Put this bad energy on you. For you, after they have gotten done with uh, berating you, okay, based off some physical characteristics, some bullshit here. Okay. But ye are gods, right? God only I guess God only supposed to look one particular way. Right. Um just back to what I was saying. This devil energy here. Okay, that's what told you that. So after they done berated you and told you these things and hopefully well, you ran away with your head in between your legs or your hand, head in the sand and, and shame because of how you look because some other human being, guess who's not flawed in any way, shape or form, right? I shouldn't even use the word flawed, but you know, that's their line of thinking. So they're not flawed in any way. They're perfect from head to fucking toe, right? Everywhere they go across on this earth or everywhere they could go on this earth, every single being that walks the earth, whether that be tree, plant, animal, human, whatever, insect, would look at that person in awe and glory and say, oh, they're so beautiful, right? They have absolutely no flaws. They are the quintessential of what all humanity and all human beings should look like, right? See, we don't know what they're doing behind closed doors because, see, if they are going to their uh, mouth, I don't even want to say brain, but to their mouth to spew about you two, the, what he said, you black, you you poor, you're ugly, you use a woman, you're, you're fat, you're this, you're that, you're nothing. That's where they go mentally. Okay, we, we can know and obviously understand that there has not been too much expansion to go on in that uh, muscle that they have that we call a brain. But see, once they do this to you, there is the hopes that you would continue to do it to yourself. They's right. As ugly. Because as fat. As small. As short. My teeth ain't set right. My hair ain't done right. Got the wrong genitalia. And these foolish things. 
where the treasure in that person's mind lies in the physical. Well, there is some treasure in the physical, but for that human being who does that, that's only where it lies. Because obviously, they if they feel like they have to tear you down based off how you look, it's a couple things. They probably are jealous of the way you look in some way, shape, or form. Or there really is just some hatred of, toward themselves about how they look. Or it's just, just typical diatribe because that's what everybody else say. That's where everybody else go. Okay, they, they have not, again, expanded mentally. So that's where they stay, in that box. Stay in that box. You're funny looking. Right. This is obviously someone here who does not. Um, they ain't big mama shit. They ain't got keys. <laughs> okay. See the key right there. They have nothing to offer of any substance. Nothing of any kind of nutritional value. No nourishment. Clown like here. Okay. Trying to balance themselves on fucking sinking sand. No solid foundation. And probably trying to rob Peter to pay Paul. Okay. Big wave behind him about to take him under. Because they have nothing else to say. Nothing of any substance here to offer. Nothing to give. So I know what I'll do. I'll talk about them and make them look bad and make them feel bad. I'll talk about how they look. And can probably barely look in the mirror themselves. This is someone who may not be in, well, let me see. Let me see, let me see, let me see. This is probably someone who doesn't have any real relationships or lasting relationships. No real philosophy about life, okay? Of course, because they're just focused on just the primal nature, the physical. Haven't really much gone beyond that. This is probably a person who doesn't really know how they feel about anything or anyone themselves, let alone you and the next person. Probably hasn't committed fully to anything. Either no morals, values, or goals are very loose ones. Mister is a perfect example of that. Probably just somebody who is just not, well, you all may be on entirely different wavelengths, paths, so on and so forth, okay? But, you know, just somebody who wants to keep you down because they want to trap you, want you to be mentally trapped here because this is where they are. Because that's what they're stuck on. Your physical appearance. That's the way I get them. Seven of coins. In reverse. Daughter of baskets. Upright. Mother of coins. Upright. And then bones. Upright. It makes me think about... Um, Hold on. All right. It makes me think about here. I got my book out, okay? Um, Hinduism here. Okay, and the concepts of the Upanishads, Brahman and Atman. Okay. Um, let's see. Brahman, the divine reality at the heart of things. Brahman, the supreme spirit. Brahman, the lived experience that all things, all things. 
the divine spirit here, all things are in some way holy because they all come from the same sacred source. But no, this energy here is better than you because of your physical appearance doesn't live up to theirs, whatever that's supposed to be. Yet, now ain't no need to compare that brain to here this, uh, what we find in Hinduism. Why? Something that has stood the test of time or has been around God knows how many thousands of years. I talked about it in another damn video. Okay, I'm not talking about the religion. I'm talking about the concepts. By understanding that we do find in the spiritual community, a lot of the same concepts are being spewed out of people's mouths, whether they know where it comes from or not. The lived experience that all things are in some way holy because they all come from the same sacred source. All things are in some way ultimately one. They don't have that understanding. Brahman is the God who appears in forms infinite. Brahman is the God who appears in forms infinite. Brahman is the God who appears in forms infinite. Now, Atman is related to Brahman and is equally important. It is translated as self or soul. It is different from the notion of an individual soul. Better translated as deepest self. But see, they don't, they can't get to that level of anything deep. They sit completely and solely on the surface. The individual console, soul confers uniqueness and personality, but Hinduism asks this question at the very deepest level, what really am I? See, that they need to be focused on what really are they? Hinduism asks the question, I, I said that, I am clearly what, not just my body, my height, weight, hair color, all of which are what subject to alteration. Fat can become thin, thin can become fat. Okay. Black, well, can become bleached. <laughs> okay. White can become tan. Kinked can become straight. Or curly, I should say, can be made straight, etc., etc., etc. I am clearly not just my body, my height and weight and hair color, all of which are subject to alteration. But am I then my tastes, thoughts, and memories, or is there more? Is there not in me a reality more fundamental than those changing individual characteristics? According to the Upanishads, not the fool who wants to tell you, you're this, you're that, you're black, you're fat, you're ugly, your, your genitalia is wrong, and blah, 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 blah. You just said nothing. Not that idiot. According to the Upanishads, how long Hinduism? Okay. The earliest stages of Indian religion. I've mentioned it before. The culture that archaeological workers, not, not the fool, who has nothing to say, nothing to offer, nothing for anyone to benefit from. The, the culture that archaeological workers uncovered their flourish before 2000 BCE, before Christian era, and is named the Harappa culture after one of the ancient city, cities. This civilization, regular street, quote unquote, regular streets, solid brick houses, pots and coins, running water used for toilets and baths, a writing sister, system which, scholar, which scholars are still working to discover. Here. Hinduism, okay, no identifiable founder, no, um, they can't understand that the spread of its influence, no creed to, divine, to define and stabilize its beliefs. It is not a single unified religious family of beliefs. How old is it? They don't know. I haven't been able to figure it out.
Let's get back. Not some fool who's been walking around a few years. Who can't tell you who don't know shit from Shinola. Don't know where they came from. Barely even know their fucking name. Discard this person and their state of mind or people who and whatever. According to the Upanishads, at the deepest level of what I am is a divine reality, a divine spirit that everything shares. The Upanishads teach that it is true to say what? That I am God. Ye are gods. Found in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And here we say, here it is. The Upanishads teach that it is true to say that I am God because for the person who understands reality at its deepest level, for the person who understands reality at its deepest level, okay, for the person who understands rea reality at its deepest level, for the person who understands reality at its deepest level, what? Everything is God. Atman, Atman is divine, holy, and timeless. Brahman is the experience of the sacred within nature and the external universe. Atman refers to the experience of the sacred within oneself. See, they don't want you to experience your sacred, the sacred that is within you. They want you to cut yourself off. Cut, 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 cut your divinity off. They're going to do it to you and then with the hopes that you will do it to yourself because it came up out of their mouth. Who are they? They are, they this too. See, they don't realize that. But that ain't your problem, no, your issue. That they don't realize their own divinity. Not just something they just spewing out their mouth. Ye are gods. Let us make man in our own image. The divine reality here. So when they say you ain't shit and you ain't this and you ain't that, essentially this is what their feeling is about the divine. What did it say? It comes in many forms, infinite, many forms, all forms, in infinite, form, infinite forms, forms infinite. So they're basically saying, God, you ain't nothing, God. You ain't nothing divine source because you're fat, you're black, you, 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 you're too white or whatever the fuck. So now they're trying to make God feel bad about God's self and God's work and God's creation. So that you can go somewhere. Okay. And have extreme low self-esteem. Okay. And really cut yourself off from your divinity and live in a place of sh guilt and shame and darkness and depression because you got to walk around in that vessel all the damn time scared to look in the mirror don't like yourself go somewhere and run till you can't no run no more throw up your food and all of this type of thing barely eat when the physical survives on that fuel and hell okay if you just want to enjoy the goddamn cookie, whatever the fuck. That's maybe that's your build, your familial build. What well, hell? Whatever it, it it may be. Okay, maybe you 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 uh you, you knock me to some shit. You knock me, motherfucker. You ain't shit. Look at your knock knees. This is someone who has not planted any kind of seeds of for themselves. Okay, has not grown anything of any kind of uh no fruit here. Okay, remember, Jesus said, shit, if the tree ain't bore no fruit, he killed the motherfucking tree. When he went to it and wasn't no fruit there, he killed the damn tree. Okay, it's good for nothing. This is this person. Or these people, these energies. Good for not a goddamn thing. But here you are, charming, imaginative, creative, loyal, great communication skills, all that internal beauty, mother of coins here, abundant, at peace, satisfied. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> Made me think of poor folks at church. Okay. It's what they testified. Okay. On your way to the by and by and glory and peace. Okay. Feeling good about yourself. Okay. Or at least you was. Okay. Until you came across this damn fool. And see, maybe this is what they saw in you. Who's at peace? You're abundant. Like yourself. Okay. You may have something, you know, you didn't like or whatever, but you're at peace here. Abundant. Okay. Caring, practical, resourceful. And look at here. I'm reading out the book. Body positive. Freely expressing warmth and keeping your damn word. Okay. I feel like this is what this person saw here. Probably went and did some, let me go uh, throw some bones and find out about them. Because I can't focus on myself. Because as far as they're concerned, there's nothing to focus on. They don't want to focus on themselves because they, they, there's nothing to focus on here. But see, for them, it's time for honest self-assessment, not the self assessing you and your shit and who you are. Okay. Finding out about your reputation. What can I do to throw them off, 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 off their game, off their square? Then they go get a reading, get some cat bones thawed. Four sticks upright. Son of sticks upright. Mother of knives in reverse. Feeling at home, okay. Focused on what you are planting, what you are building, okay. Who you are, what you got going on. But see, they was focused on your shit too, <laughs> not theirs. Because they have, and this is why they're in this position. They have planted nothing of any kind of substance, nothing to offer, nothing life giving. Ain't giving, ain't got no nourishment to give, not a damn soul. None. Here you are in a place of celebration, relaxation. So you're relaxed, laying down your roots, feeling blessed, having harmonious interactions, taking things to the next level, okay. letting your head down, relax, relax, prosperity. Look at all that prosperity right there. Feeling free, freedom, security, teamwork, working well with others, building something to look forward to, feeling good about yourself. Didn't I say that shit like this right here? And making your dreams come true. But see, this is what they found out. This is what they looked into. Got to see what they up to. Let me go see what they all about. And I got to find a way to tear them down. Okay. But here, okay, something said, stop. Stop, motherfucker. Who goes here? And see this little boy here, I never noticed this before. Many times I had looked at this card. But this little boy here got five fingers here. Polydactylism. And he's got the dark Mongolian spots on his face. Webbed fingers and webbed toes. Okay, Being born with a call over his face were physical signs that indicated what a natural talent for root working, building them roots. Okay. Uh, let me see. And he is not ashamed here in the book of being polydactyl. In fact, he's proud of it, of being quote unquote different. Now, you know how many people laughed at this child with these five fingers? I remember I went to camp when I was a little girl. There was a girl there. 
So I remember seeing her like two or three years in a row. The woman who raised me was a nurse in a, at a camp, Camp Mueller. It was a two-week camp for inner city children. And I had been, I had gone with her for years. As a matter of fact, I got a picture up in my community tab where I'm sitting on the, she was a nurse. So I would, when I was too young to stay in the cabin with the other kids, I would stay with her that the years, the early years that I went. And that's me sitting on the bed at, at the camp. And that's why it's a hospital bed because she was the nurse for the camp. And I uh, was sitting in the bed. Those were my favorite pajamas. You can go look on the community tab. I got my mouth open laughing or some shit. Okay. But then when I was able to go stay in uh, the uh, cabins, when I got older to go stay in the cabin, I cried my eyes out because I did not want to go. <laughs> I wanted to stay with her. <laughs> okay. There was a girl I remember like, I remember her two years in a row. She had an extra finger. Now her finger did not come up like his. It stuck out on the side. And she told us that what she told us they they were called it was like an extra finger. And that little girl that had no shame at all about that extra finger. She liked to show it off, actually. Okay. Think about how many people made fun of her because of her finger when they got mad at her. Want to tear her down and make her feel bad about herself. But it seemed as though she had parents who had enough sense to no, this child's different and teach her no matter what you be proud of yourself and your extra finger, your extra appendage there. Love yourself. That girl show that thing off. I remember. I found it to be so interesting. Okay. So he said, bitch, stop. You can't come come up in here. I'm proud that I was fat and black and ugly. And God knows whatever this ain't just for the black folks. Whatever other folk, whatever other people out there who may be watching up other uh colors and races and nationalities, all the same shit for y'all too. This person has no knowledge. None. Eight of baskets. Upright. Ten of baskets in reverse. They ain't got no knowledge. They ain't got no friends. Walk away from this person. When these type of energies come around you. Okay. And even hell, hell, it, when they come around you, maybe they ain't talking about you. Maybe you see them doing that with somebody else. Okay. Please. Okay. Walk away from that person. Not just because they're stupid. Okay. But they, I mean, what what what's the conversation gonna be? Like two uh children in the back of the classroom. Yeah, I, I work with children in school. I ain't going for that shit. Ain't gonna be no talking about nobody and putting nobody down in my room. I do not have it. I saw some of the children I subbed tonight. Hey. <laughs> in a bookstore. <laughs> hey, there go our sub. Yay, good to see y'all. Okay, walk away because all they're gonna do is bring you down to their low energetic level of nothing. Okay, they ain't got okay. They ain't got no. no <laughs> They ain't planting no seeds. They ain't no nothing nutritious here to offer. Okay, no knowledge here. Okay, and ain't got no friends. None. And if you find yourself having to be alone, go be alone in contemplation saying, thank God I had just enough to move my ass away from that. All right. But let's see what the book said about that. I'm here because they are dead. <laughs> People like that, they are dead. I mean, it's just like, it's so dumb and boring. I mean, something about loops. Okay, like a cannon. Well, say any old thing. Do any old thing. Be any old thing. Okay. No, nothing solid here. And I read that with one of these, okay? Nothing solid. No philosophy of life. Okay? nothing. No morals, no values, nothing that they live by, okay? That makes them someone who has planted something that is worthy of any kind of worthiness to be offered to the world and themselves. And they are a part of the world. 
I mean, let them go. Okay. Here we have four of knives, a well-deserved rest. Get away from them. So you can be at rest and at peace. Because see, this that's a chaotic energy. That has nothing but chaos. Uh, hold on. Mental manipulation, trying to manipulate you mentally, okay, so they can destroy you spiritually. Because see, whether it's directed at another person and you hanging out with them, it's directed at you as well. Shot going to be fired at you soon. There's, there's no nothing to hone them in here. They have not grown, okay? Stunted, emotional, st stunting here, mentally. I'm hearing spiritually as well, okay? Okay, I'm seeing prayer. Maybe you need to pray for that person, shit, whatever. Recentering, okay? Relief from stress, honey. Walk away so you can be relieved from their stress. Uh, finding sanctuary, contemplation, solitude, honey, peace and quiet, recovery, quiet preparation, meditation, and goddamn, they need to just get a grip. That's what it says here, getting a grip, getting an understanding on life. Okay. So who told you these terrible things? Might have been your mother, your father, a parent, a friend, a quote unquote loved one, Okay, whomever. Okay, but I'm here find relief in yourself and solitude in yourself that what you are from the divine source, honey. You are part of the divine source. Ye are gods. Ye are God. Back in the book. Okay. That ye are the of the supreme spirit. Okay, what did I, I'm trying to see, I have stuff underlined. Okay, that you are holy because you come from the sacred source. That they don't realize that they are even one with you. It is experience that all things are in some way ultimately one because they all come from the same sacred source. All things come from the same sacred source. Okay, it either says in Isaiah, what I created the dark and light, the good and the bad, or well, the evil and the good, etc., etc., etc. Okay, even the darkness, the evil is a creation of the divine, the same divine source. That it has its purpose. That you are the God who appears in forms infinite. You are one of the infinite forms that God is appearing in, in this space. All right? And that your individual self has conferred uniqueness and personality. And that you are more than, than just your body. Shit, that shit can be changed. That can be altered. That you are more, or you are a reality that is more fundamental than those changing individual characteristics. That you at the deepest level, level is, I am, is a divine, re, uh, the deepest level of what I am is a divine reality, a divine spirit that everything shares. The Upanishads teach that it is true to say that I am God. Ye are God. I'm repeating it. Ye are God. For the person who understands, understands, overstands, whatever, okay, works with you, floats your boat, okay, reality at the deepest level, what everything is God. Okay. The experience of the sacred within nature and the external universe. The experience of the sacred within oneself. I am hearing that's it. Thank you.